The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. Welcome to The Buyer's Guide. Not spending wildly, but wisely. Today, we're looking at digital cameras. Now, if you think that going digital has got something to do with the 24-hour clock, then this is the program for you. A digital camera doesn't use film. It transforms images into electronic data. You can see the captured shot immediately, and if you don't like the shot, you can instantly erase it and start again. From shooting to printing takes only minutes, and some digital cameras allow you to shoot videos and record sound. Generally, the more expensive the camera, the higher the image quality and the number of features. But there's no point in paying for features that you don't need. So let's find out the choices that two schools made and why. Later, we'll be visiting secondary school Cardinal Wiseman. But first, we're going to Stockwell Primary in South West London. Stockwell Primary is a well-resourced, two-form entry school with whiteboards, ICT suites, laptops for children and IT lessons for parents. Ray Barker, director of the British Educational Suppliers Association, went to find out more about their digital cameras. Hannah, what do the students think of the digital cameras? Oh, well, obviously, the children absolutely love using um, digital cameras and any form of ICT, really. It's very motivational and inspiring for the children. They like using it to um, take photographs of each other, to take photographs themselves, to see themselves in print. They like um, photographing their work. If there's been an event that we've been to, it's a, you know, it's a great pleasure to, to go over the event and look at the photos and discuss it and review it. And it's great to get the children involved in actually taking the photographs themselves. So, I mean, most of the time I don't do the photography. It's the children that actually take the photographs to record the events. The school have bought seven Sony 3.2 megapixel cameras. One of the best benefits of this camera is the fact that it's, it's user friendly and durable. Um, it's very straightforward, you know, simple power button to turn it on. You have the zoom feature, very straightforward to just zoom in and zoom out. You have the mode setting here, so um, you know, and very clear symbols that the children understand. So when it's the symbol of the camera, it's you know, it's ready to take photographs. And there's the arrow symbol. Um, you change the mode, and then you can flick through the photographs that you've taken and delete the photographs as necessary, or print the photographs that you, you think are, are worthy. Digital cameras have been in schools for some time. And even in 2001, over 85% of schools had at least one digital camera. The latest figures are for 2004, when over 95% of schools had digital cameras. What kind of factors did you take into consideration when you were making your choice of digital cameras? It has very long um, lasting battery life, which has made it to be very good because if you charge it for a whole day trip, it lasts enough for you to go on trip and come back and also sometimes we even give it out to children for the weekends and um, we only charge it maybe for one hour and give it to all the children to take home and they've actually worked with it throughout the weekend yeah. so it has long battery lifespan and um, apart from that also the connectivity is quite good yeah. because um, as soon as you connect it to the PC because we are using Windows XP, it automatically comes up. And so even to actually download the pictures is quite easy and children are able to do that. At Stockwell Primary, their digital cameras have 3.2 megapixels. The higher the megapixel value of your camera, the greater the resolution of your photographs. If you want 8x10 prints, you'll need a model with 4 megapixels. And for 16x20 prints, you'll need 8 megapixels. It's a very user-friendly camera um, for both staff and children. Um, it's easy to use, it's um, fairly sturdy, which is important when you're <laughs> being dealt with by kids. We like it in the school, it's very slim and compact, and also children are able to actually um, use it very well without um, spoiling it. We didn't buy seven at the initial stage, we actually bought two. But when, when we were able to get feedbacks from teachers, from the feedback they gave to us, because they were able to actually use it, manoeuvre it very well, so we had to buy more. And we're even planning to buy more in the nearest future. And is there anything that you didn't consider that you now wish you had? 
At the moment, no, because having talked to all our teachers, having spoken to teaching assistants and um, our children, I think we we'll want more, more of Sony digital camera. The only thing is we might be going for higher megapixel. But at the moment, with um, the money we have from LEA, I think we can still stick to 3.2 megapixel. With a digital camera, you'll never have to pay for film or processing again. But they do cost more than comparable film cameras. You could consider buying several cheap digital cameras or even a class set. This could cost a lot less than one expensive camera. Here are some tips to bear in mind. Digital cameras are getting faster, but they're still slower than film cameras. Check how quickly it can start up and be ready to shoot, and how long it takes to be ready for the next shot. Try it out, or if you can't, use a stopwatch to see what a five second recycle time really means and pick a camera that takes better quality pictures over one with many features. You can always remove red eye later, but you can't add in detail that a poor camera has missed. The second school featured in today's programme is Cardinal Wiseman Roman Catholic High School in West London. They've chosen a digital camera that does two things, takes stills and video. It's the Digital Blue by TAG. Ray Barker went to meet their ICT coordinator, James Meehan. Well, how do you make use of the Digital Blue in school? Well, the students within their presenting information project, which is one of the first transition projects we do in Year 7, are supposed to include images that they produce themselves. So by using the digital cameras, these are about £70, so we've got quite a few of these, so we can have a class set of them, mm -hmm. so all the students can actually use those. Mm -hmm. They think they're great and they really enjoy using them. Press this, and you'll hear a little noise, that's taking a picture. You want to happen with that? On the screen though, there's resolution, there's five little dots, so if you have the five dots, that's quite a low resolution picture. If you press this again and it goes to nine dots, that's a much higher resolution picture, that's going to be much better on that one, okay? And there's nine cameras there, so it's going to be about three per group. So, camera person to take a camera. One group picture, yes, and then you've got a group one. <laughs> right, so do make sure you've got an, at least single pictures as well. The digital blue is really good for the students to use. It's quite low resolution, which for the network manager mm -hmm. is wonderful mm -hmm. because they can take a few of these pictures, put it on their area, and it's not going to make the file server fall over. Right. So with having almost 1,700 students, they can all take a few of those pictures it's not too much of a problem. The Digital Blue is also very popular in primary schools because it's easy to use for young children with small hands. When buying a digital camera, look at how many buttons there are. Are they easy to access and press? Also, check out the instructions. Look for a camera with a pocket-sized manual instead of one on CD-ROM. It's easier to use when you're out and about. What other features are there on the Digital Blue? The Digital Blue comes with a very nice suite of software that you can edit videos, you can make your own videos, you can add animation to it. It has a whole load of extra features on that that the students loved using. First one, do play and see how it looks at the moment. Oh, this one here. The one on the left, the first one on the left, that one, yeah. <laughs> the hidden cost, particularly on the Digital Blue, when it's connected up to the computer, there isn't an additional cost, but if you want to walk around with it and use it, not on the computer, it takes four AAA batteries and it quite enjoys eating them. Cardinal Wiseman School also used Canon's semi-professional 300D for more serious photography. Digital SLRs have the best image quality of any of the digital cameras and are similar to a 35mm camera. It's not so child friendly, but it has six megapixels. Excellent, that's good, that's When we're doing some more serious photography, so when the students are doing in year 13 a multimedia project and they have to have more accurate images and more control of their images, then we'll actually use something like the Canon, which gives a much higher resolution image. The Canon stores photos on a removable memory card. Cards can have capacities of anywhere between 34 megabytes and 1 gigabyte. 
On the cannon itself, it's got a lot of uh, far more advanced features. So on the top of the cannon, we have the normal automatic. Mm -hmm. We have quite a few different programmable modes. You can do it as a sport mode, as a, a macro mode. So if you want to take a picture or a close-up of a flower, it's actually quite a lot of advanced features. Again, it does the uh, delay, 10 second delay, so you can actually use that. One of the things that you do want to do with uh, digital cameras, particularly when you start going to telephotos, is have a very good tripod. The difference in picture quality between the digital blue and Canon is quite obvious, but they've been purchased for very different uses. So does James Meehan feel he's made the right choice? We were quite fortunate on the getting the cameras because we were knowledgeable enough to actually get the right sort of cameras at the beginning, so I'd go for the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, however, because of the cost difference, when you're spending about £70 on one of these, you can get maybe a class set. Uh, when these are nearer to eight, nine hundred pounds, you're not going to buy very many of these. And if you were to offer teachers watching any one nugget of advice from your experience, what would that be? I'd give them two really. The first would be take the pictures on high resolution. You can always downgrade the resolution later if you want to put it on a webcam. Mm -hmm. And also to get a card reader so that if other staff have got different cameras, you don't want to have to install a whole load of different software on your machine to be able to read them, and loads of different cables. So if you've just got a card reader, take the card out of the camera, plug it in, and it then just works straight away. The decision-making process usually boils down to one thing, money. Decide what you can afford, and then look for cameras that meet your budget. The most important elements to consider are, what will the camera be used for? high quality art design work, recording field trips and work in progress, or general use in and around the school. Who will use the camera? Teachers or other adults? Supervised pupils or unsupervised pupils? How will the images be used? Printed out on paper, manipulated or stored electronically? Generally, the more expensive the camera, the higher the image quality and the greater the number of features. Try to choose a camera with an LCD screen. Younger pupils find it easier to use. Pixel resolution refers to the amount of detail a camera can capture. The higher the number of megapixels, the better and sharper the images. For school use, a robust camera is needed. Look out for poor quality port and memory slot covers. Storage or memory is the amount of photographs or images the camera is able to hold. Cameras can come with built-in memory, but the majority require memory cards. For most users, 64 megabytes would be adequate. Test how fast the camera performs. You'll probably be unhappy with any digital camera that takes longer than four seconds to boot up or longer than six seconds between shots. And most cameras download via a standard USB connection. Some use a faster connection, FireWire. However, you need to check your computer has a FireWire port. If you'd like to find out more details on any of the products featured in this programme, or if you'd simply like more information about where to go for advice, please see our website, teachers.tv forward slash buyers guide. Essential education projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.